Okay, so what we're going to start off with, and of course, just to reiterate a few things that we need already know about refraction. Uh, refraction is the bending of light as it goes from one medium to the next of varying densities. Now, how do we know, what do we always need to have in place? Always have a normal and a boundary. In this case, our two media, um, uh, materials, as you can see in the right corner, um, or right side, sorry, of your screen, is, well, they have glass. Refractive index for glass is 1.5 and the refractive index for air is approximately 1. So in fact what we are doing, we are going from a more dense to a less dense medium. So let's see what happens. Now our refracted angle and our incident angles are always taken from the normal. So the important point to remember is that these red lines represent rays of light. So it's a red light in this case as the color would see. So what we are going to look at here is that our angle of incidence is from your incident ray to your normal. And we can actually measure that if I move this protractor right here using this PHET simulation. That angle is approximately, so it is um, 10, 20, about 24 around there also. And our angle of refraction here is larger, it's 35 around there. So if you notice that we are going from a more to a less, what is called optically dense, the correct terminology, which I'll do now. Uh, more, more to a less dense medium the angle increases so what is going to happen however and this is what we're going to be looking at today what is going to happen if I continue to increase my angle of incidence please pay very little attention to this very light ray right here this light ray is actually our angle of reflection we are more concerned with refraction so if I continue to increase my angle of incidence my angle of refraction is in fact getting larger however what was happening here going to reach a point where it looks as if well where is the ray so we're going to go back a bit it's going to increase so much to 90 keep in mind our rays are always measured from your normal to your uh, ray of light or angle sorry are measured from our normal to the ray of light so point to note here is that if i continue to increase it there's going to come a point where it's so large it doesn't even exist so what really happens there well let's go down to our paint document so that we can actually see this a little bit better okay so what we're going to start off with and of course to recap one or two things very quickly is that we are just going to recap refraction and i'm going to actually deliberately move from a specifically more dense medium to a less dense medium now the correct phrase of course we always label our normal and our boundary um, if I am going, for example, from a more dense medium, the correct terminology is more optically dense. And it is very synonymous. Well, it's synonymous, actually. To, let's say, for example, you have an obstacle course as opposed to, let's say, a sprint. A less optically dense medium, of course, the person will travel faster. Hence, of course, we cannot now conclude about the speed being uh, faster as well. So you're going from a more to a less optically dense medium. And what happens here? As an important point to note, for example, and of course this is the example that we did have, if you move from glass with our refractive index, and we discussed that our refractive index is really a measure of how much light can actually bend through that medium. Refractive index is, is bigger in glass as it is in air. Air's refractive index is approximately 1, very, sim very similar to that of a vacuum. And one of the things that we have to pay attention to is that the bigger the refractive index, the more dense it is, it means that you have a bit more restriction in the, that rate, that angle of incidence that we are starting with or looking at. So your angle of incidence, some of you call it theta 1, theta i. Um, this is your incident rate taken from your normal to that ray is your angle, therefore your incident angle. And if you are going from a more to a less dense medium, more dense, more restriction, smaller angle. A less dense medium, well, the ray of light is going to exaggeratedly become give us a greater angle of angle here and of course our angle here is our angle of refraction we call it theta 2 as well why did I stop to explain this well simply this this is really in applying Snell's law and I'm going from let's say medium well in this case glass to air more to less dense this gives us a direction of that ray of light the travel of the ray of light you are going from a sign of the angle in glass to sign of the angle in air which is equal to the inverse ratio according to Snell's law of our refractive index values. Always ensure when you are writing this that your diagonals are the same medium because you need to cross multiply. And of course, simply because I just want to re-explain something very quickly here. It comes from 
uh, also written as if we use theta 1 and theta 2 for example I can write it very sim similarly uh, for example like this uh, n a sine theta if I cross multiply a is equal to n g sine theta g now that's fine if we use this equation our general form however of this particular uh, well, Snell's law, this law is n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. That's where it actually comes from. And there's another way of writing Snell's law if you had to write it in terms of um, an equation. Now, why is this so important? Well, we want to explore something. Because if I increase my angle of incidence, if I go beyond this, and this is what we saw in the simulation, I'm going beyond a certain point where my angle of refraction is now going to line this boundary which means it's the largest possible value we can get for refraction which is 90 degrees a special name therefore is given to this angle of incidence it is actually called the critical angle so by definition what is our critical angle one thing to note our critical angle by definition is what we can see on the diagram our critical angle is in fact that angle of incidence for which I'm just writing it in symbol form here the angle of refraction is 90 degrees hmm. now let's get a scenario where we can actually work this critical angle shall we so what does this mean in our diagram it means that this angle is now 42 degrees so which also indicates that once now this is 40 degrees this is our critical angle so this is critical simply because at this particular angle our refracted angle is the largest that it can possibly be which is 90 degrees now let's let's take this a little step further let's say we exceed this critical angle and this is what we had seen in our diagram so our angle of incidence we are now changing it to exceed our critical angle what is going to happen you can't have refraction occurring because we already established the fact that our largest angle of refraction could possibly that can possibly exist is 90 degrees. So what is going to happen is that the ray of light will not even leave the first more dense medium. It remains reflected within that medium. So what is this called? This is called, we say there for the ray of light or the rays of light undergo total internal reflection. The ray of light never truly leaves that more dense medium and of course we can shorten this to call it TIR. What are the conditions for total internal reflection as we have seen? Well, uh, conditions for that would be one, the angle of incidence as we have seen in our diagram exceeds your critical angle. Two, notice we are going from glass into air which is a more to a less dense medium, more optically dense. I'm going to put more to a less optically dense medium. I'm just going to put less dense medium and for total internal reflection to occur we are now dealing with reflection this is a useful topic for that this can actually exist is um, actually in fiber optics so our angle of incidence because reflection is now occur occurring is equal to our angle second law of reflection as we can state it well as we actually just the law of reflection where two angles are equal to each other this is our uh, conditions these are our conditions for total internal reflection to occur now let's go back now to our simulation to check something all right now this being said what we can actually look at here we have to, let's see if this angle is actually 42 or more because we just found it using these exact values to be 42 so let's see if it exceeds 42 because of, which is our critical angle then we have total internal reflection occurring so this is 30 35 40 41 for, i think it's a little bit between 42 and 43 the line is a little bit thicker so yes, as it exceeds 42, even by a fraction, it means a total in, a fraction of an, an angle or a degree, the total internal reflection will occur. All right, if I continue to move this here, notice that the angle is about 40, 41 or so. I'm getting down there, I'm getting down there. We're going to reach the point. This is about 42. Uh, it's not exactly there, but we'll work with it. And if I continue to move beyond that, this is way actually beyond 40. You can tell because if we pass two lines, two small markings here, uh, you're going to get the uh, total until a reflection occurring. Now I can continue, I could get any bigger than that, it will still have reflection occurring because we have already exceeded that critical angle. 
All right, I hope this was helpful. Um, any questions you also want me to uh, explain or re-explain, please feel free to ask. Um, and keep in mind that the simulations are there to help us. Uh, all right, so any other videos you need to check out, please do. Take care. Bye.